Okay. Uh, welcome to uh, WP Dev Table episode 16. Uh, and we're back. We had a little bit of a hiatus with the uh, holidays and whatnot, and um, we're looking to start the new year, 2016, on a on really consistent note. To be honest with you, uh, we got a, a few guests lined up, and uh, we want to welcome our first guest, Scott, to the show. Um, he's more well known for his work in AppPressor and founding that company, and really has pioneered um, mobile apps and WordPress. Um, and we want to welcome him to the show here. Um, and just so you can kind of, if you haven't seen the show, um, we want to we kind of try to broadcast every Monday. Um, but to stay in the know, definitely subscribe to us at wpdevtable.com. And follow us out there on Twitters and you know the major no major social networks. Um, and today we have Tom Harrigan here. Bronson is on hiatus, <laughs> at least for the first first week anyway. And we have Scott as well. Tom, what did you hey, what's up? Uh, I'm Tom. I work at Alley Interactive. We're a full service uh, digital agency. Uh, work mostly with like WordPress VIP clients, big media companies, and nonprofits. Uh, so I've been doing WordPress for the last six or seven years now. Awesome. Uh, and without further ado, Scott, why don't you just tell us about yourself a little bit? Yeah. So um, stuff with mobile apps and WordPress, and our website is appresser.com. Um, Scott Bollinger. Uh oh, <laughs> I think he's frozen up. Scott, you there? Yeah. Can you guys? Yep. All right. Yeah. So. Uh... Uh oh. Hello. <laughs> what a what a way to start the show. Am I frozen up? No. This um, is where we'll do the bad lip reading version of things. All right. Let me know if I'm back. Oh yeah, you're back now. All right. I. So, anyways, <laughs> Scott Bollinger, ScottBollinger.com. See you on the subway. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, yeah, why don't, why don't you guys uh, just head into the show and I'll, I'll try to figure out my internet. All right. <laughs> Hopefully Scott comes back uh, soon. Um, so we can uh, talk at Scott and yeah. pretend he's answering <laughs> and then not answers. Or he can try to answer too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is it All right, let's, let's start out with uh, 2016 goals. I don't really like resolutions because it kind of seems like everyone always fails at those. So, like, what are you hoping to accomplish in 2016, Jason? Well, for me, I guess really all I want to do is kind of work on <clears throat> work really on the business rather than in the business. What is um, your business? Um, well, as some people know, anyway. Um, I do uh, WordPress development, custom development, um, month over month development resources for small businesses, develop uh, design and marketing agencies. Um, basically, just kind of being kind of a partner in code with them. I specialize in, in e-commerce and uh, you know increasing conversions on the site, whether that be for mailing lists or whatnot. So what I'm trying to do is since I've kind of shaped my business last year, I want to really start working on the business itself and start, instead of in the business, meaning I want to start to try to increase profits and things. So as far as resolutions go, I don't really have one because I'm much in the same way. I kind of just kind of set a target of where I want to be at the end of the year and hope I get there and try to always move that needle every day no matter what I'm doing. 
So what about you, Tom? Um, a lot of mine are on this board behind me. I'm not sure if you can see it. My wife wrote them down, and the first one is Get Ripped, which really is just an overarching um, health and fitness goal of, you know, get back into a healthy lifestyle and get my sleeping habits back in order, eating well, going to the gym, got a gym membership, so that's a step in the right direction. I've stepped foot in there one time, which is more than zero, so we're on the right track anyway. Uh, still only 11 days into the year, so uh, hoping to get in there again tomorrow. And I have a ton of comic books, so I'm going to finally try and sell those off. I have like 30,000 comic books or so, which take up a lot of space. So if I can start to clear those out a little bit, um, happy wife, happy life. Definitely. Yeah. And I think we got Scott back. Scott? So. Yeah. Can you guys hear me right now? Yeah. All what right. are your 2016 goals? Back from my internet provider, that's for sure. <laughs> so we're kind of just hitting on uh, 2016 goals. Curious some of yours, Scott. Yeah, so 2016, um, we're looking to grow um, at presser revenue. Um, we had a we had pretty big growth in. Um, and so for 2016, we're looking to just make. Uh, yeah, oh. Am I cutting out again? A little bit. I'm getting the gist of what you're saying, though. We're seeing a new version of AppPressor, uh, which is going to just bring some new functionality that wasn't previously possible. Oh. Work with the API and you know Ionic framework and things like that. In like towards the basically throughout the year, towards the end of the year, we we just released a, a pretty cool app. So I'm looking to get more into that. We have some a little bit of client work lined up, and um, we're just kind of exploring the API and WordPress and apps and all that kind of stuff. That the sort of cutting edge. Front of that, and I don't know exactly what that means yet, but I mean beyond just making cool custom apps. Uh, but if that could become a product or something at some point, that's something that I've been thinking about. Just helping other people make apps more easily with the API uh, and WordPress. But uh, I don't, I don't know 100% where that's going to go yet. Um, what do you think some of those new features are that you're looking to bring in? Uh oh. You guys hear me now? A little bit. I think you're frozen up. Good download and upload speeds right now. I'm not sure what's going on with the video. Uh, I might I might turn off my video, see if this helps. Save some bandwidth. Yeah. Let's see what's So assuming this is going to work flawlessly now, uh, <laughs> what do you think some of those new features are that you'd like to bring into the product, Scott? I think he just threw his laptop through the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We might have to... Uh... Reschedge? Yeah, maybe. Is that any better? I think so. Let's, give it, a, let's give it a little bit more of a shot. Yeah. And then if not, then maybe we can reschedule or something. Yeah. Um, so it, let me know if I drop out again. But, yeah, new new features for AppPressor. Uh, one of them is with AppPressor 2, you're going to be able to do offline. Um you know, build parts of your app that work offline. So that's the, one of the biggest things. Um, we kind of reconfigured the way a lot of stuff works so that we could do that. And so we're going to be focusing on helping people make, you know, offline functionality into their app. 
and then there's also just building new extensions and things like that. Um, but basically, we we kind of had to reconfigure all the core stuff of App Presser and rewrite a lot of our code to make offline work. And so that's kind of what we're focusing on right now, and just getting that out in beta. Cool. Seeing what people want out of it and, and building in more. Very cool. Any personal goals for 2016? Um, personal goals. Not really. Here's goals. Um, like I, I don't know why it just doesn't. I, I don't see myself sticking to them. So I kind of try to just do what I need to do throughout the year. You know. Yeah, business right. goals are better for me because I then I can like help my team like have goals and everything like that. That that kind of makes it more sense for me. But I don't know. I just they just don't work for me. Mm -hmm. How big yeah. is the team going into this year? So um, we have partners now. And, well, I have three partners, and then. Still a pretty small team, um, and then I I work with, and so we're for sure. Cool. We'll be filling in the blanks on those numbers there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Scott, how? How did you get into WordPress? And and I guess a step before that, what were, what were you doing before that got you into WordPress? If you're there. Yeah. So I started out. Um, I actually got a I got a music degree in college, and then I sold boats, and then I got a job. At and then I kind of got into web design, so it was kind of a kind of a roundabout way into it. But um, the web design I got into because the company I was working for needed more web stuff than they needed graphic stuff. And then um, just worked for them for a few years and kind of went off on my own and started doing client work with WordPress. Got deeper and deeper into WordPress and really liked it. Started using it for for most of my client projects and. Um, slowly transitioned from a designer into a developer, and um, I founded a for a few years, and then got into App Presser about two and a half years ago, so um, that's where I am today. Right on. From <clears throat> the point that you started App Presser a couple of years ago, and the advancements that have been made in the API over that amount of time since it really wasn't into core until like just recently. How have the changes that have been going on due to the ongoing development changed what the product actually is and what kind of service you can offer to your potential customers? Yeah, so there, this is kind of a point of confusion amongst um, just the general uh, populace and, and especially with my products as well mobile app with WordPress. One is using AppPressor, which is kind of loading up your whole site in the app, and it actually works really well with WordPress because the API um, is so new and, and a lot of features are still not supported through the API without just a ton of custom development. So what we do everything to work without a lot of fuss um, and uh, maybe you don't have a real big budget and AppPressor works really great for that type of app um, and then we also have high-end clients build them an app that you um, in that way we can we can put a lot more stuff It's, it's been really cool working with the API. Um, 
it just it still is really really new and it's really esoteric and so unless you're like a hardcore you're you're probably not going to be able to do business into like you know API and non API serve their their purpose like whatever you're different tools for the Oh. I think we got lost you now. Yeah, so the quality has been going in and out quite a lot. Um, I definitely don't want to like cut you off and miss out on everything you're saying, but unfortunately we are missing out on a lot of what you're saying anyway. Uh, Maybe it's we can... possible that sometime that we can establish like a good internet connection. It would be great to have you on the show again and actually see your face. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe, I don't know. You know what? Uh, I think I'll just end this, and then we could talk in the green room kind of thing. All right, I mean, is, is there anything else that you want to chat about before we end the official first episode of 2016? <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't have to be the first episode, but, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I see that there's one person watching now. <laughs> you are so, a trooper, my friend. Yes, and I wish and I would love for you got you whoever you are to tweet me and uh, we will send know. you some swag that we don't actually have. Yeah, I'll, we'll come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> we should make some WP Dove Table swag in the new year. That would be kind of cool. Hey, yeah, I mean, you know, we got stickers. You know, I don't know. We have stickers? I don't even have a sticker. Well, not stick. I have my own stickers. Oh yeah, I have a Jason Resnick sticker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh. All right. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, we're going to try to hook up and get Scott back on, um, you know, maybe maybe within the week or, you know, when he's available. But um, we'll figure this out. This whole, uh, you know, <laughs> Google Hangouts thing, you know, we're not just <laughs> – <laughs> we, we don't just speak techie. We Technology techie. is kind of new to us. I mean, yeah. yeah, we really don't know what we're doing. So you know, we hit All the right. button and hope for the best. Scott yeah. definitely has a lot of great information that I would personally love to hear and I know would be beneficial to a lot of the people that watch WP DevTable. So I would definitely love to get him back on and be able to have the full story and you know ask a lot of great questions and get some information exchange going on. So yeah, definitely. That would definitely be great to have in the early part of 2016, and we're going to have some other cool JavaScript people on the show within the next few weeks too, right? Like every yeah. week for the next few weeks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pull. I think we might have. I think it's Josh is up next. Let me see. Who's that? We got Josh Pollock next week. Ah, yeah, that'll be nice. So I know he's doing a lot of good things, and he's already released that book, the ebook, out for it. So mm -hmm. uh, that'll be a good conversation to have too. And I think his A/B testing plugin just came out as well within like the last two weeks or so. It's yep. probably nice. Yeah, I I took a look at it, and it seems like pretty good. So you know, it, it's there's a lot of good things happening. So we you know we hope that we can bring that to the audience for sure. Mm -hmm. So are you going to be speaking at any conferences this year? Um, too early to tell. Yeah, too early to tell. I got a couple that are kind of in the works. Um, we'll see what happens. A couple outside of the WordPress space. But, like more business-oriented conferences? Uh, yeah, freelancer conferences, that kind of stuff. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Cool. Yeah. What about you? I have no idea. Uh, I, l I look at central.wordcamp a lot and mm -hmm. check out what conferences actually have a scheduled date. Um, like WordCamp Buffalo is supposed to occur sometime soon, but they don't have their date on Central yet. So I talk to their organizers every once in a while just to get an idea of when that's going to be coming up because I always like going up there. Uh, so hopefully that'll be in the first quarter, but I have no firm information on that. And there are a couple that I really want to go to even if I'm not going to submit a speaker application. Like WordCamp Atlanta is excellent. I think the last time I went there was 2012, but 
that was just such a fun time. I would love to go back. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a couple others in the States within the next couple months. Like Miami is coming up, uh, but there are a bunch in Europe. So those always kind of cloud up my feed as like camps that I will never, ever go to. For yeah. The most part. Yeah. I'd like to go to Wukampf. That That's the one that's up on my high priority list as well as um, I'd like to maybe either go to Microconf or Pressonomics, you know, one of those business ones. But Pressonomics in Minneapolis? Uh, yes. Yep. Cool. Yeah. That sounds neat. And WooConf is going to be down in Texas, yeah? Yeah, they're both, both. Uh, I think they're a month apart too, which is why it's kind of like I got to pick one or the other mm -hmm. you know, for the expenses. But we'll see what happens. I went to Wuc the first WooConf, and that was a good time. So I'd like to go to the second one. It'd be interesting to see the uh, change, you know, now that Automatic has it. So, yeah, I mean, the thing I'm keen on is figuring out what the game plan is, like business wise, like for everyone else's businesses, right? like how can they move forward? Because let's say WooCommerce comes on to WordPress VIP. Well, that opens the doors for all of those, you know, uh, VIP partners and those agencies that can now start to do e commerce work on the VIP platform. And with being a VIP partner, they're one of only a handful of people that can go and you know easily do that stuff at scale, which would just be totally exciting to do. And I think it gives them a leg up on a lot of the other people that maybe haven't worked with VIP. Uh, just you know, being able to go and start building on that platform and understand the ground rules already of how VIP works. So, can you imagine something like Home Depot running on WooCommerce? <laughs> you know, like that—that that would be a massive e-commerce site. You know, and yeah. To go and have that on a platform like VIP would be really neat. I have no idea what Home Depot runs on, and I'm a hundred or at least like 99% per, sure it's not on <laughs> WordPress at all. No, it's uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> I bought something there for a gift for Christmas, and I know it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, being able to have sites at a, a larger scale, more towards that end of the spectrum, running on WooCommerce would be really cool. So I'd like to see what the game plan is for them moving that onto there. I know there are some complications around the database schema and you know how they're going to support all those custom tables because WooCommerce has like seven or eight custom tables now. And I think they were talking about adding a new table for orders. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to Patrick Garman and a couple of the Woo guys at WordCamp US. And he works on currently one of the largest WooCommerce sites, uh, traffic, and, uh, just volume wise in general. And they were starting to run into scaling issues where it just couldn't get past this hump unless like orders had their own table. So mm -hmm. while it would be great to go and fit everything into the existing WordPress schema, like there are reasons that you can go and create tables in your databases. <laughs> They're needed in some situations. And the standard WordPress schema doesn't work for everything. Like you can go and try to make things scale forever, but at some point, yeah, things do deserve their own table in the schema. Yeah. I mean, so. I know that I've worked on some pretty large WooCommerce sites too and um, you know, run into the same thing. And it really comes down to when you're trying to do custom stuff and you're extending WooCommerce more than really I guess it was maybe intended to, mm -hmm. you know. And that's why, right? The, that's why the database kind of becomes to a point where it's just to a crawl, you know, you're, you're indexing columns that you don't want to be indexing, but you kind of have to and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I, it'd be great if they broke that out in, you know, into its own table. I've heard that too. So, um, I just think it's, uh, I don't know. We'll see, you know, I, th I think it'll be, that's why I kind of want to go to WooConf to really kind of see where they see it going because, mm -hmm. When I went to the first one, it was fantastic because it was like, you know, all of Woo was there. So, like, you could really kind of touch touch and engage with people that were making the decisions, right? Who like, did you touch? Well, I didn't <laughs> touch any, you know, press palms, you know, shake hands, whatever. Yeah, but, I um, you. you know, and that's, what, that's what's great about it, you know, and, and that's why I like, that's why I like the conferences, you know, the most really is because you can kind of like you know grab somebody in the hallway and have a conversation with somebody rather than the you know the, the i don't know the sessions are great but sometimes it's better to just have that conversation yeah you know? yeah i think conversations and the networking and connections that you make with people are really what make conferences for me like at least in the WordPress world, I'm rarely, rarely going because there's a session that really just stood out to me and it was like, oh, I got to go to that WordCamp. It's 
more about the people in the community that's there. And then the sessions are kind of like, oh, here's this added benefit. So, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that could be a lot different at a, a much more niche conference where it's solely focused on WooCommerce itself and the hurdles with facing an e-commerce uh, site and platform situation type thing. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, and that's the thing too is like, you know, I one of the major efforts that I had worked on in the past was with WooCommerce subscriptions, you know, so I kind of built that relationship with Brent and his team, you know, out in San Francisco and things like that. So these conferences kind of bring all those people all to, you know, one spot too. And you can kind of have those conversations with like the people that you might not, you know, like met through the network, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, what's kind of cool. So you're not only just talking to the Woo people, but you're talking to other people that you maybe have used their code or use a plugin or, you know, just kind of, chatted with through github repository that you you know you don't even know what they sound like you know so mm -hmm. you know that that engagement is good yeah there was uh there's this one guy at woo uh, and we worked together at the same time for a few months or so before i left the company his name is roy and we finally met in person at loopconf and then we saw each other again at like wordcamp us and stuff but th this dude has like arms that are giant pythons like tree trunk arms, right? And you're talking to him behind a computer screen, and it's like, okay, that's Roy, whatever. And then you see him in person, you're just like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was the same with Brent Shepard. I had no He's idea. Very tall. Yeah, I had no idea. I was just like, wow, you're like, you know what, six, seven? <laughs> Everyone's the same height online, right? Yep, everybody, you know, from here up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The great but, equalizer. Definitely. A chair. I can be as <laughs> jacked as I want online, right? Yep. Yep. Cool. I've already met my 2016 goal then. <laughs> yeah, go tell your wife. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I, I got these uh, two things like sent to my office today, and I stopped in there today to pick them up. Uh, so Amazon had been having like these daily deals and stuff on Amazon. Well, yes, Amazon had deals on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> but like through December and the new year and whatnot. And I went and I picked up a couple and I bought my first selfie stick. And oh I hate saying that. Like, I, I feel like such a giant turd saying that. <laughs> you feel like a giant turd using it. I feel like one holding it up too, but it has a tripod. So the reason I got make it better. I'm not going to use it as a selfie stick. I, the reason I got it is because I have permanently uh, misplaced my GoPro. So, jeez, didn't yeah. you just get that? I got it around the time I got married. It was before I got married, so if I knew how long ago that was, <laughs> um, it was like a well, about a year and a half ago. So, yes, I lost it, and that is a relatively short amount of time. Uh, I mean, there's a chance that I'll find it. There are a limited number of places that it could possibly be. But anyway, I have an iPhone six, and it has a pretty good camera, so I'm going to use that rather than buying a new camera, at least for like the next quarter or so. And this thing can go and hold the iPhone and it has a tripod. So my other tripod doesn't fit an iPhone and the selfie stick that I got from LoopConf in my goodie bag doesn't have a tripod, so it's not very useful. You like try to wedge it into a corner and hold up and then it falls <laughs> over. I have a video of me fixing my uh, box spring where I did that and it like fell over at one point. So this thing with a tripod seemed useful, so I picked that up. Okay. Was, the only selfie stick I will ever buy in my life. And <laughs> I should give it a new name. I bought a tripod. Yeah, okay. that's what we'll call yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Makes yeah. me feel better about myself. And then I got this thing, which is a battery for the Mac. So it's like, you know how everyone has those USB um, yeah. power yeah. things? This is like that, but it goes and it charges your computer. Oh. So it'll, it'll hold like an extra three or four hours of charge. So like, let's say I'm on an airplane or a bus or something and there's no power and I'm coding, you know, like there's no tomorrow and I'm out of battery. Now I get an extra three or four hours. So I haven't actually tried it out yet, but it sounds cool. Next time I travel, it's going to go with me. Nice. Yeah. So like this thing, I think it was retailing at like 200, but with their deal, it was 25 bucks. So I bought eight. Dude. What the hell? Maybe you don't tell me about that. I think I tweeted it. Oh, you did? Well, yeah. I'm sorry. I should have told you 
more explicitly. Yeah. But I still have like four of them if you want one. All right. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> At twenty five bucks, I was like, okay, Christmas presents for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like by eight, we're done. Right. Yeah. So I have a couple of buddies that I haven't seen yet that I, you know, they're they're getting one of those. So nice. they, they don't watch the show, so it's okay. <laughs> or if they do, then whatever. Who yeah. cares? We're reaching out to a new audience. Who? <laughs> well, your buddies if they don't okay. watch. Yeah. Yeah, they're on Python devs. Uh, yeah, I mean, in related to your your selfie stick there, I've actually started with Snapchat over the like the past you know week or so, maybe two weeks. Are you posting pictures of yourself without a shirt on? No, no, Good. I'm not doing okay. anything like that. Thank you. No, it's actually, <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually pretty cool. It's like um, you know, I've I've been reading a lot of buzz about it, how people are starting to use it for brands and business and things like that and kind of reaching you know an audience but what i find like that it i like it better than something like periscope because or meerkat because it's like you could just drop like 10 seconds worth of just a thought you know and you can have like a consistent train of thought throughout the day mm -hmm. so like you can kind of sprinkle these things in every now and then so i'm messing around with it and it's pretty cool it's, you know, and the other thing too is it's kind of fun because you can kind of like draw all over yourself. And so it's like you know, kind of funny. I've never used Snap. I like downloaded Snapchat like maybe like a year ago and I never, I, I felt like such an old man because I was just like, I don't even know how to, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't get this. You know, there was no way to search to find somebody. There was no way to, I was like, this is not. And then when I started looking up and finding out what it was really about, what people were using it for, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to use it for this. <laughs> so I don't see a business benefit on it until just recently. So, mm. Have any features changed that have made it more feasible for you to use it for business? I think the stories thing, and I don't know when that came into play, but um, I never really followed too closely with it, to be honest with you. Because when I downloaded it, it was just sending it to other people, you know, mm -hmm. and there was no way to find people. So I was just like, all right, this is useless. You know, I don't know. But the stories thing itself is, um, I think that's kind of unique because it's it's kind of like Twitter in a way, but you can do it like video or by picture or something like that. And you could kind of post it and then it'll stay there for 24 hours, you know. So I've been kind of using it to... I guess kind of give like, you know, my insights into how I transform my business from being a freelancer into a sustainable business, you know, month over month and getting the residual. So, um, I don't know, it's been working out. I mean, <laughs> the only thing that I don't like is I feel like spammy when I'm like, you know, I'll go on Twitter and be like, Hey, follow me on Snapchat. You know, I'm talking about, you know, moving from freelance to, you know, mm -hmm. a business and things like that. So that's the only thing that kind of, you know, sucks about it is that you gotta have to leverage other platforms to pull people into it. So that's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people did that with Facebook and Twitter for a long time until Twitter really like hit the hockey stick part of its growth curve. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty good. So, I mean, it's funny how people have followed, you know, and like the thing that's kind of cool is that you can see the metrics right on the video or the, the picture that you, you take, you can actually see who's viewed it and you can see if they've taken like a screenshot and that kind of stuff. So it's actually kind of pretty cool that the way that they just kind of all integrated, like the, I guess the major metrics that you would want to know about right into it. But I don't know, we'll see, you know, see how it goes. Yeah, that's neat. Um, have you read Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk? I have it and I've read half of it. Okay. So. so I think Snapchat is like in the final chapter of the book. So there's like this emerging networks chapter where it's like, here are all these new things that aren't totally figured out yet, but you should be aware of them. Yeah. He's he's been doing like a hard push over it the past month or so, like or maybe even longer, but mm -hmm. I'd kind of picked up on him doing it for like the past month. Um but the thing that's funny is like when when he attaches himself to something that's usually when the business folks kind of follow suit i guess but what's funny is like how he's using snapchat 
he's kind of using it halfway and he's always talking about, you know, diving full on and learning the platform and doing it the way that it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just spent some time over the past week too to like look at who's actually using Snapchat to like the fullest, like, and he's not even like on par with some of these people. I mean, some people like spend like an hour on just a snap, like taking one picture. And uh, like they draw all over it. I mean, they tell stories. Like this one guy, he was, you know, climbing the Space Needle out in Seattle, and it was all done through Snapchat. Like, and he was actually there, but he would like augment the whole thing by drawing on it. It was ridiculous. I was like, how the hell do you do that stuff? <laughs> You're just drawing on a little screen with your finger. How does that happen? But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's pretty Maybe cool. Maybe he has the Apple Pen. It may be. It. Yeah. That thing was so weird when I saw it debuted. I was in Brussels and they, they showed it charging where it's just like sticking out the bottom of the iPad. It's like, it kind of doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I guess it has a use. Yeah. Snapchat's on iPad, yeah? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. yeah. I mean, I'm sure it is. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I mean, if I've, I'm kind of using that to really talk about really how I transform my business. I want to see, I might be, uh, you know, thinking about a product of some sort, maybe at the end of the year or something, but um, I want to see, you know, if there's, there's good engagement so far. And that's what's funny is like people just kind of chat, you know, like follow you and then they'll make a comment, but it's a comment based on video and they'll just, you know, and it's just like, Okay, I didn't. Even, I don't know who you are. I don't know how you found me, but all right, you know, and it, and it's pretty cool, you know. So, yay! Social networks actually being social. <laughs> yeah, that's new. <laughs> well, used for uh, you know, it's it. You know what's good is, is that I I think it even though that it still has that connotation that like eleven year olds are using it and then other people are using it for nefarious things. I I think that it's. You know, I think if it gains traction in the business world, you know, I, th I think that that's, you know, I don't know. Eventually, they'll probably monetize it some way like everything else. But, you know, I think that it's kind of nice to see that, you know, I, they had a platform. It does obviously very well. But the fact that they were, at, you know, if it's turned into for good, <laughs> so to speak, you know, maybe that, that's a good thing to see. Have, do you remember Chat Roulette? Yes. I could see that kind of being like the Snapchat of its time, though it was only one-to-ones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It would be interesting if that like launched around now and how people thought about using it in a business sense. If it has one, it might have zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, some things are just what they are, you know? Yeah, I only think about it because you're talking about people using it for nefarious things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I've been thinking about using a Raspberry Pi for a bit now. Or, well, first of all, getting one and then using it. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw this Instructable. It was on Lifehacker the other day. And it was using a Raspberry Pi and, like, a discarded laptop screen to go and, like, display... Mm -hmm. A shared Google Calendar and the weather and whatever else and whatever, uh, so it's you know running the server and displaying that app. And a bit before that, I was thinking about creating this uh, like passive application for people with like dementia and stuff like that. And they wouldn't interact with it at all. It would just show information to them to kind of like serve as reminders for things that they've done or need to do and that kind of deal. Uh, so I wanted to first of all like tap into their phone line. Is for the the target market is like early dementia patients, kind of where they're not like gone or whatever. They're still independent and like living on their own, but they're at the point where they need a little bit of, of assistance going on. If not for them, for their family, it's like in my use case, my grandma is kind of going through that now, and it's at the point where where you'll get like you know a dozen phone calls a day. And if you had like an Arduino tied into the phone line and it was logging your outgoing phone calls and had a screen where it was displaying, like you just called this person 10 minutes ago, maybe that would be like, oh, I just called them. I don't need to call them again right now. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Um, 
or like a shared Google calendar where it's like your daughter is coming to visit you tomorrow or like you have this appointment on this day of the week and that would kind of cut down on phone calls being like, are you coming over today and that kind of deal. It seems like those type of situations are a lot of what I've been experiencing at this stage of everything that's going on and I was trying to figure out if there was any kind of technolo technological solution that would be able to go and help that. Is yeah. there? There's, so there's nothing out there for that right now, or uh, not that I've found. I haven't looked too too deeply into it yet. But I was just trying to think about the feasibility of building something with a Raspberry Pi that could go and display this kind of information in a helpful way to those, you know, people. Yeah, I mean, I've messed around with Arduino boards, you know, but I've never really gone too much into it. You know, the, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of messed around, just doing simple things. Yeah, but, you know. I yeah, turned a cool. weed nunchuck into a computer mouse and an Arduino. That was cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, like the nunchuck has the gyros and it has the joystick and the clicker. So to me, that's the perfect mouse because I can lay there comatose and like just move my thumb and control my computer, right? And I can go and map gestures for like forward, back, whatever. And it just seemed like a neat thing to do. So I got a wireless nunchuck for like 20 bucks and then plugged it into the Arduino, you know? So that was a fun little project. Not incredibly useful for anyone, but. Okay. Yeah, I create I, I created a automatic uh, squirt gun kind of thing for your cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, your cat's but, been chilling right there, like I, just on the screen. Like, hey, I want to be part of this. Well, well, he kept on scratching my leg, and I kept pushing him away. So he's fine over there now. Now he's looking at me because he probably knows that we're talking about him. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, it was pretty cool, you know, with motion. You know, basically, if he he, can, he walked by. And he wasn't supposed to be going to where he was going. And he would squirt him. So yeah, again, kind of pointless. But yeah, it did what it did. I, I didn't have to do it. <laughs> so, like if the cat's trying to go to your room in the middle of the night. Yep. Exactly. Cool. So, but yeah, I mean that, that that seems like a a pretty cool thing. I mean, I had a friend of mine that he worked with a Raspberry Pi. He did a couple of cool things. Like he would, you know, he kind of made a like a hardwired like Netflix box before your TV had Netflix, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. I can, I can put you in touch with him. Maybe he's got some ideas. I don't know how much farther he's gotten with it, you know, but I know that he knows about it anyway. Groovy. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe one of these days I'll start hacking on that. It'll be fun. Also, do you have an AeroPress? No, I don't. Oh. So it's like a plunger for coffee, right? <laughs> And my wrist has been hurting lately. It was like, you got to go and push down mm -hmm. on it. And you're at like a push up type angle, you know, where you're at, you're uh, perpendicular to between your arm and your hand, right? Mm -hmm. So it's putting stress on that joint a lot. And like the same way they have the perfect push up where you have that grip that you can just <laughs> go and like go straight down. I'm like, what if they had like a handle for the arrow press, where it's just like something where you can go and push straight down instead of having your wrist at an angle. So. I kind of want to make that. I think it would basically just be a piece of PVC pipe, um, a PVC cap, <laughs> and then like a piece of foam on top of it or something. You know, I think a grip itself would be overkill, but something where you could go and push down on it with a fist would be useful. I saw this one product and it was like a lever, like a water faucet uh, or spout lever, lever where you go and insert the AeroPress into it and then use the lever to go and push it down. And it was like seventy bucks. And Jeez. I'm not sure how incredibly useful it is, like with the angle that it, it's going at and how easy it would be. I mean, I haven't tried it out though, so maybe it works swell. But at 70 bucks, it's kind of just like, I don't know if I want a $70 device to make pumping coffee out of my $20 device easier. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, aren't aero pre presses like under 50 bucks? They're like 20 bucks, I think, or, or maybe like 30, 35. But still, I mean, it's a little plastic plunger. But like this grip thing, I think it would cost about like two dollars and fifty cents to make it, maybe less than that. I don't know. Yeah, you could probably go to the plumbing department in Home Depot, Home Depot and, yeah. and tell them, and be mm -hmm. like, they'll be like, oh yeah, here, 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 and put it together. Yeah, because the AeroPress has like um, the the top part of the plunger is hollow, right? So it's got the cylinder, and then there is a space in the middle. So you could just go and insert a, a smaller cylind cylindrical tube in there. And that would give it stabilization if you did it like the length of the, the thing. So you wouldn't have to worry about it like wobbling or whatnot. So, yeah. Cool. My wife thinks it's stupid. Uh, she's like, is this really such a big problem for you? 
well, my wrist hurts. <laughs> Maybe I drink too much coffee, but I would. Yeah, that's you know, the other thing. Yeah. yeah, I would rather continue drinking this much coffee. Yeah, well, without the wrist pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, my wife said the same thing about the Amazon Echo too. She goes, "Do you really need this thing?" But Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, I have it. You like it? Yeah, it's not bad. You know, it's it's the thing was I got it. I actually I got it probably about six months ago, mm -hmm. but. Uh, software keeps updating so there's more and more commands there's more and more services linking into it i saw a lot of people hacking it and stuff like that but i just never went into it you know i just i don't have the time you know if i was like 20 again back in college i would have been all over that but um you know i actually use it for a couple of things that are pretty useful for me anyway mm -hmm. and uh ifttt has <clears throat> has their api and what i can do is i could just tell Alexa to add a to do, you know, like if I'm on the phone or something like that, I could just, you know, say add a to do and then whatever the to do is, and that'll go in and automatically add it to my to doist account. So kind of like links in that way. And it's nice and easy. I don't have to, you know, open up to doist and type it in and all that other stuff or forget it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I like it. It's pretty cool, you know. And I mean, the thing is, I think really what it is is it. <laughs> and all the emails pushed to it is, you know, to link your Amazon account so that you could just say, Alexa, buy peanut butter, you know, and it just shows up at your house tomorrow, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I, with little kids running around the house, I've kind of stayed away from all of that kind of stuff because I don't want any of those one click or one saying things, you know. I have yeah. no idea what it shows up at my door, you know. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the buttons? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those, I, they don't do anything for me. I don't, yeah. Not that I have the buttons and I push them and nothing happens, but I mean, it just seems silly. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, need a dozen buttons for it to go like, and buy all the different things that I that's need. What, that's what I'm like. I'm like, what do I open up the closet and I just start pushing? <laughs> yeah, <buttons>? yeah, right. <laughs> one button for one thing, that's not going to work very well. But mm. I mean, I do use the Amazon subscribe thing and that's great. You know, when, it's great once you um, kind of know your timeline of when you're going to order things, mm -hmm. you know, like whether it's, you know, like shampoo or whatever it might be. Shut up. <laughs> but, um, you know, that that's pretty cool. But I think that that's what that button thing was like a precursor to was that Amazon subscription thing. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, I tend to buy in bulk on Amazon. Like I have 24 boxes of tissues. Because yeah. yeah. price per unit, you, it's still a lot cheaper than the discount you get for doing a subscription. Yeah. And right now I need paper towels, but I don't know that I can store 24 rolls of paper towels right now. <laughs> yeah. So now we don't have paper towels. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was a pretty cool uh, different tangent. To, yeah, uh, totally. Dev to. But still tacky <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But... Uh, I guess, um, I don't know, we can reschedule. I'm going to hit up with Scott and see if we can uh, reschedule him. Mm -hmm. I know we got Josh next week. And then the following week, we've got... Um, Zach? No, Tim Nash. Tim Nash. Oh, cool. And then okay. Zach's after him. Yeah. So, Zach Gordon. So, we definitely got a good lineup for sure. So, uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah, totally. And we'll test our connections and stuff beforehand. Yeah, definitely. Get wired in or... Yeah, we'll run a landline, you know, well, I guess a water line to Tim Nash, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That trans... Con that, what is that? That transatlantic mm -hmm. conduit we got to plug into? Oh, yeah. So. Yep. All right. Cool deal. Um, I guess uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, where can people uh, reach out? Say thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Harrigan on Twitter. Uh, I'll probably... Hopefully, you'll be writing more blog posts on thomasharrigan.com. I wrote one of a series that I was planning to do one a day for a week, but that was like a week ago, and only one is done. So that series will continue, and maybe I'll have to go and edit that post. But it's basically about productivity and maintaining, uh, like creating a productive environment. So it started out with sleep, and then it's going to go into uh, how to start your morning the right way, uh, using lists and the getting things done method in useful ways and that kind of deal. Uh, productive home office environment and 
other stuff around that. So it should be kind of neat. It's based off of a talk that I did at WordCamp Saratoga that was received a lot better than I expected it to. Like, not not to say like it wasn't good and it was better than I thought it would be, but like I got more of a reaction out of it than I was really planning on. Uh, so that was exciting, and it seemed like a topic that not a lot of people had touched on or really spent too much time thinking about in the the WordPress space. Though, so, so it it was like a nine a.m. talk in the morning and usually people are still a little groggy mm -hmm. but like the room was full and everyone was active and it, it gave them a lot to think about for the sessions going through the day so it's kind of neat I'm gonna flush that out into more blog posts because it was like a one-hour talk so that could be like half a dozen posts anyway yeah cool. thomasharrigan.com and Tom Harrigan on Twitter how nice. about you uh, well I'm at res and our viewer actually did reach out to me so I thank Thank you, Melinda Helt from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for sticking with us. Um, little plug in for her. She's a Gen Genesis developer. So thanks for watching. Thank um, you. I'm at res, and that's with three Zs, and res.com, that's also with three Zs. Um, but if you want to stay in the know on when we're going to have um, shows, wpdevtable.com slash subscribe. And that'll get you right on our new uh, mailing list. And I always send out mailing of the day that we record. But um, now that we're on Mondays and we're going to schedule and stay on Mondays, hopefully, that uh, you know we can have more timely <laughs> mailings so that it's not sporadic. Yeah. Uh, Was our last in November? I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this December we were all pretty heads down. So yeah, but groovy. All right. So, uh, do you think we'll do show notes for this? <laughs> I think I'm going to do show notes. I'll All do right. show notes for this. We'll put yeah, this up. at the very least. Just throw together a whole bunch of links for things that we talked about. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. I'll see you on Monday. Yep. Okay. Good night. Night. <laughs>